So far in this new ARM microcontroller series, I have introduced you to the STM32 ARM microcontroller, showed how to set up the physical development environment to transfer programs on the chip and develop your circuits, showed how to set up the development environment for writing programs and monitoring software to show data on the chip while running the program. I introduced you to USART serial communications. I showed four main code lines that can control almost all aspects of the microcontroller. I showed a method to recover your microcontroller if something goes wrong. I showed you how to change the clock speed of the microcontroller using two different approaches. I demonstrated how to solder a fine pitch SMD microcontroller to a PCB so you can do this yourself. And I showed how to initialize USART serial communication and perform your first transmit of characters from the microcontroller. In this video, I'm going to show you how to receive characters using the USART serial communication protocol. But we're not going to receive the characters from another device. We're going to receive the characters straight from the microcontroller that we're using. So we're going to connect the transmit line directly to the receive line. So when we transmit something in code, we will receive it right back into the microcontroller and we can take a look at what we transmitted. For this exercise to work, we need to make sure that the transmit line, which is the USART 1TX is connected to the receive line. So when we make a transmit of the letter N, let's say, it's going to connect directly to the receive line and it's going to receive it and store this data into the RDR, the receive data register, and we can access that register and see what the data is. So what I've done here is simply connected pin number 42 and 43 together. From the last video, we made sure that the internal clock is at 48 megahertz. We set up the two receive and transmit pins of the microcontroller to be set for the USART1 transmit and receive. Then we initialized the USART for transmit only. We set up the oversampling and the one bit feature, which is the majority vote feature for ensuring that the data is correct over the signal line. We set up the baud rate, which is directly related to the 48 megahertz. And we set up the data frame for the transmit and receive, because when we're setting up the transmit, the initialization of the baud rate and setting up the data frame also relates to the receiving. So there's only a couple things to consider when receiving. And receiving is very similar to transmitting, because transmitting requires the information to be put into a temporary buffer before it's actually transmitted. And receiving also uses a temporary buffer until you read that buffer. So let's take a look at what we need to consider in receiving. Two of the bits in the control register one is necessary when receiving. One of the bits is RXNEIE, which is setting up the RXNE interrupt enable. And this is going to tell us when we are ready to access the register that contains the data that is being received. And the other one is the RE bit. And the RE bit is the receiver enable. And when you enable the receiver, it's going to be looking for a start bit, as I explained in the previous videos. The start bit is the indication that there is data in the data frame. The third bit that we're going to be very interested in is it's telling us when there will be some data in the register to access. And that's going to be in the interrupt and status register for the USART. And the bit that we're going to be concerned with is the RXNE bit, which is the read data register not empty. So when this is a one, then the RDR, the receive data register, is ready to be accessed. So let's go ahead and set these bits in the control register first. I'm going to put this right after the transmit enable, and it's going to be the same format. It's going to be accessing the USART1 control register 1. And because we want to set the bits, we want to use the OR bitwise operation. And the first one we're going to set is the, the interrupt enable register which is the RXEIE bit. 
which this bit allows us to use the RxNe bit to tell us when the received data is ready to be accessed. And the other one is just receiving enable. In the previous program, we sent the word newbie hack to the transmit line. I'm going to re remove all of this because we don't really need it. And we're just going to send the letter N through the transmit line so we can receive it. And we're going to send it right back to its own receiving, USART1. So we need to wait until the RDR register, the receive data register, is not empty. And we use the RxNe bit to do this. So what we're telling the program to do is we want to wait while the RxNe is equal to a zero. So when it's not set, there's no data in the RDR register. So we're waiting while it's zero. And when it becomes a one, it'll get out of this loop and go on to the next line. And now we can access the received character. But let's, I want to be able to monitor this. So I want to see whether this actually worked or not. So let's go ahead and monitor this and use the STM Studio to be able to see the contents of the RDR register, the received data register. So I'm going to create a temporary variable at the as a global variable for this program. And I'll do that right above the main. And as always, I use the volatile keyword. So this variable is not optimized out. I'm going to use the car. So it's a character and it's an 8-bit. I could actually use the, let's use this one because I think this is actually the size of the register itself. So let's do that. Received data. Let's do that. So this will be our variable that we'll use to receive the data. And now let's access this data register and store the contents of the data register into the received data variable. To make the variable appear like I just did, say I just had this, I use the control spacebar. And since it's the only one of this name, if I had like more than one name very similar, it could give me a list, but it didn't. And I just made the name appear. So I'm going to have this equal, directly equal the the RDR register. So I could leave it like this. What it's doing is it's storing the RDR register. It's assigning the value that's in here into the received data variable. And once this happens, the RDR data register, it removes the data from that register automatically by hardware. So that's really important to understand. So once this is done, once this code line has been executed, there won't be any more data in here. So this RxNe will now become a zero automatically by hardware. So now we, since we have this variable created, we can go ahead and use this in our monitoring software so we can see if it actually worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this program and transfer the program onto the microcontroller and let's test it. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the microcontroller so we can execute the program and transfer it to the microcontroller. And now I'm going to press play to initiate the transfer. Let's make sure it worked. All right. Okay. So it downloaded the code successfully and now it's shutting down. So the fact that it's shut down, it's the actual microcontroller is running because it has power on it, but the IDE isn't connected to it currently. So we can actually use the STM Studio to monitor that variable. I've already set it up, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a new project so you can see how I did it. All right, so I'm going to go to the program here and you can see that I have the debug open. And what I did is I opened the list of files here under the debug and the elf file is the one we want. So we're, I'm just going to right click this, go to properties so I can do a copy and paste of this, um, this file name and where it's located. I'm going to press the right button, press copy and I don't need this anymore. I'm going to go back to the STM Studio and I'm going to right click in this area here, display variable settings. And I'm going to import 
from that executable file. So I'm just going to go here, click on the ellipsis so I can get the file explorer open. Go here and then paste control V, which is pasting that line I just copied and select executable file. Don't worry about these errors. It gives you a list and you can see received data is one of those items on the list. So I'm going to press the import because I want to import that into that section. And I'm going to close and now I need to send this to the var viewer. So I'm going to right click send to var viewer. This is going to be a character so I'm not looking to graph this character. I need to change it to table format. By pressing the play button in STM Studio, we're accessing the microcontroller and it will start to access the variable that we're asking it to access. Once we press play, you can see that the read value is immediately changed to 78. This value is in decimal format. If we wanted the value to be in hexadecimal format, we can press the checkbox in hexadecimal and you'll see that it changed to 0x4e. If we go to the internet and look up an ASCII chart, we'll see that the decimal value of 78 is the letter N, which is exactly what we're expecting. This was a relatively short video, and that's because the receiving of the USART is relatively simple. It only required a few lines of code because we've already set up the USART to do the transmitting, but it also set up the data frame for the receiving as well. In the next video, I'm going to take a look at using USART, but setting up the USART and the pins for the transmit and receive using auto-generated code and the HAL library. So you can know an alternative way to set up and use the USART. I hope to see you in the next video. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification icon, and consider liking this video as well. There are so many videos to come. Thank you so much for watching.